five years ago, when I first met Master Suan Hua in San Francisco, the elder asked me in the first sentence. Who was Fawn originally? Do you remember? At that time, I was stunned and couldn't answer. Elder Suan Hua smiled and said, Think about it. I looked at him. Gradually, many phantoms and illusions from the past appeared in my mind. I have never met the elder before, but I feel that I already know him, and gradually I remember some things. The elder smiled and said, Remember it? Incomplete. The elder said, You are here to assist in promoting Buddhism. Later, a young American bhikkhu from Gold Mountain Temple told me, three years ago, my master had predicted in Rhode Island that there would be someone from the north in the future to deal with the issue of opening a water well. It seems to come true on you. Back then, I didn't know what I could do to promote Dharma. Back then, I have never studied Buddhist scriptures. I know nothing except chanting Avalakites Varabodhisattva and Amitabha Buddha. How can I participate in the Dharma preaching? The expectations and predictions of these two masters made me astonished. In the past five years, I have gradually embarked on writing essays about Buddhism. I seem to have made some progress in the field of chanting Buddha. I occasionally wandered in meditation and was able to glimpse the relationship between Buddhism and the universe. Occasionally I see something in the past and the future, which made me determined to write for Buddha Dharma. The half-filled bottle sloshes, and the full bottle remains still. I have no cultivation skills, and I overestimate my capabilities. I can't help making random statements. Inevitably, I make mistakes sometimes. However, I think that the Dharma is profound and vast like the sea. When will I get a certified score of 60? I'm afraid that I will be very old when I'm skillful enough to score 40. If I want to participate in the work of promoting Buddhism, how can I wait until I am knowledgeable? I might as well write while learning. So I wrote down my comprehension from my simple observations, and then inquired for verification in the Buddhist scriptures. I often surprised that what I saw was already written in the Buddhist scriptures. I also found that many discoveries in modern space science have been revealed in Buddhist scriptures thousands of years ago. So I formed my Buddhist view of space science, and I discovered that Buddhism was originally the knowledge of the mystery of the universe. Such awareness helped me observe the universe more deeply, so I could better describe the truth of the universe and the Dharma. In fact, I am not the creator. For thousands of years in Buddhism, some people have written and clarified the principles of the universe's ontology in Buddhist scriptures. It's a pity that those words are aged and annihilated a lot so that they are incomplete. There are also the heretical doctrines and perverted views that violate science and foolish people's wisdom mixed with Buddhism. In addition, Buddhists keep secrets and don't reveal to others, or put them on riddles, Zen words, and narratives. Gradually, many people don't understand them and regard the original scientific Buddhism as superstition. I think that when we preach Buddhism in this age of space science, in addition to focusing on elaborating the truths of Buddhist scriptures and language, we also have to study the cosmic ontology of Buddhism. We must rebuild the obliterated and lost Buddhist cosmological scientific concepts so that the worldly people can understand Buddhism and become faithful to it, learn from the Buddha and do benevolence for the world, and implement the compassionate wishes of the Buddha's heart. Then the world may reduce some wars and disasters. Based on these concepts, I am not afraid of being ridiculed to be naive, and I am no longer afraid to say something wrong. I will be open-minded and venture to disclose the progress of my mindset briefly to study with the novice Buddhists. I also hope that everyone will reveal their path and state of practice and also learn from each other. In the future, hoping that we all will attain the Buddha realm together, have Bodhisattva, and carry out Buddha's compassionate vows.
the Buddhist scriptures have already stated the critical prophecies, which predicted the future destruction of the world and the simultaneous construction and destruction of the universe. Therefore, the Buddha has compassion and vows to ferry all beings across the bitter sea of reincarnation and exist in the universe without death or birth forever. The nebula spiral system will age and be destroyed, explode into gas, and the gas will gradually rotate and condense and evolve into the nebula spiral system. Tens of thousands of eons have elapsed since the beginning of the nebula's formation. We are in this tiny solar system. Human beings living on such a minute earth are like microbes. No matter how many generations of descendants we have, we'll never escape the explosion of the solar system or the Milky Way and will be eliminated altogether. Only when we believe in Buddhism and chant the Buddha and cultivate morality, our spiritual souls get out of the flesh, out of the earth and to the universe, and become a Buddha, which is eternal great wisdom, we can escape destruction. If we jump into outer space and look down on the earth, we can see the earth rotating. Everyone has Buddha nature. That is to say, everyone has potential wisdom and mind power. We come from the universe. We were originally some non-material wisdom, only because the environmental conditions of the earth limit the physical body we are attached. The matters also restrict the development of original wisdom. So we can only see the things around us. Material desires and vexations make us lose our innate potential. We don't know that we already have the potential of Buddha nature but instead denounce those who have the potential to be superstition or demon or something. The five magical abilities of Buddhism are not superstitions. Nowadays, more and more scientists admit that the human body has spiritual potential. Under a clear and calm situation, everyone can recover or develop their potential. Such as the ability of celestial eyes, the ability of celestial ears, the ability of travel, the ability to know others' thoughts, the ability to know destiny in the past lives. These are the possible potentials to be released from samadhi, which is a state of intense concentration achieved through meditation. Everyone indeed has potential abilities, which can be recovered when the state of mind is clarified and entered into concentration. You probably have had a few little premonitions experiences. For example, you suddenly think of someone for no reason, and that person comes to you, you thought that as if someone would call, then the phone rang, you thought that you will be unlucky when you go out today. As a result, you are hit by a bicycle. These tiny daily hunches are the slight exposure of your potential, but only 1000%. If you can cultivate till reaching concentration, with nihility in your mind and have a spotless heart, you can also grow wisdom from concentration, travel the space and universe, and see the past and the future. The best way is to believe in Buddhism and chant Buddha, obtain concentration from precepts, and generate wisdom from concentration. Bats can emit radar waves, and of course, humans can also emit mind waves. Someone said, you don't need to chant Buddha, no need to meditate, just do whatever you like as Zen. Others said, the Dharma can still be discarded, let alone the non-Dharma. Yes, there are such sentences in the Buddhist scriptures, but I want to ask a question, if you have not obtained the Dharma, just as you have not got a boat to cross the sea, how do you abandon the boat and land ashore? You have to get on board and get on the other side before you can relinquish the ferry. In my opinion, Buddhism is a fairy. If you haven't on board but have already boasted of abandoning ship, that is self-deception. In fact, you are still standing on the dock. Fly over the sea? However, I don't think there is a rigid rule for how long to sit for meditation. Sometimes, I can enter the state of meditative concentration within a minute. Sometimes, it's not great to sit for too long. Entering meditative concentration does not necessarily happen when you are sitting in meditation. My personal experience is that if you chant the Buddha anywhere, maybe you will enter concentration at any time, and your potential will burst out, as long as you chant the Buddha devoutly. Of course, the critical thing about chanting Buddha is devotion and concentration. 
However, it is also important to read more Buddhist scriptures and listen to the Buddhist scriptures more often so that we can understand the principles of the Dharma more clearly and chant the Buddha more effectively. To chant Buddha, you must be devout and concentrate. You don't need to speak out. It depends on the situation, and you can use it flexibly according to the occasion. For example, we sometimes unavoidably attend friends' weddings and so on in heretic churches. People sing their poems. We are mindful of the Buddha we deeply believe in. We are not influenced by others and don't have to speak it out loud to cause disputes. However, there are many benefits to utter Buddha's name. First of all, it helps us to concentrate and reduces outside disturbing sounds. Further importantly, the sound of the Buddha's name has its inconceivable power. I think that the sound of Buddha's names has a certain scientific effect of ultrasound. Some sound waves emitted by the Buddha's names make people calm and peaceful, some have the power to surrender demon, and some have the power to protect us. We should never consider the sound as meaningless and give up uttering Buddha completely. My personal experience is. While suffering, you pray for Avalokites Varabodhisattva piously, there must be miraculous induction. When you are vexed, if you say Namo Manja Shri Bodhisattva and the vexation will gradually disappear. You might as well try. Manja Shri Bodhisattva eradicate people's afflictions with great wisdom. When we are not able to solve the afflictions on our own, we pray to Manja Shri Bodhisattva, from time to time, we have a magical induction. Turning back to me, I rely on chanting Buddha to seek meditative concentration. I occasionally see something in meditation. That is Buddha's power releasing my potential spiritual abilities, so I'm able to see something occasionally. If I don't usually chant Buddha, I'm still an idiot who is hindered by material desires. I can't see anything. I can't even see the road clearly. Not to mention seeing Hong Kong 5,000 miles away. Speaking of mind power, I admit that I have had several experiments described below, which are only experiments, and there is no certain conclusion. Once, I chanted Buddha in my heart and looked at the row of fluorescent street lamps on the road. Suddenly I wished to prove the existence of Buddha power while chanting. I prayed that the Buddha power would help me to put out the nearest high fluorescent lamp in front of my house. After watching for two or three minutes, the fluorescent light suddenly turned dark red and finally went out. At that time, the other lights on the same street did not go out. I was shocked and couldn't believe it. Then I looked at the third light, and soon it went out again. I hurriedly looked at the front light, hoping that it would light up. Later, both lights come on again. These coincidences encourage me to believe in Buddha power more deeply. Later, I remotely looked at the ships on the sea from the rear window of a building one night. One of the ships was very brightly lit. I measured that the ship was about a mile away from me, and I wanted to experiment with it once again. So I chanted Buddha very piously and reached the state of no distracting thoughts. Then I pointed to the brightest light in the middle of the boat with my eyes and wanted it to go out. Strangely enough, the headlight suddenly went out, and the other lights did not go out. I even heard an uproar from the sailors on the ship, running up and down to find out why the headlight on the top of the bridge went out. So I hoped that the light would come on again. As a result, it was on. I still didn't believe it. Ten minutes later, I hoped that the light went out again and it went out. Then I hope it lit up again. This is a secret that I have never dared to disclose. I still dare not admit that it is my power. I think it is Buddha power if it is not accidental. Otherwise, I self-hypnotize and think I can do it. Anyway, it is difficult to explain. Since that night last year, I still dare not stare at the TV or the lamp at home for fear that it might burn out. Maybe I am excessively worried. Sometimes I was naughty, staring at the dog next door to let it sneeze or pointing a leaf to let it shake without wind. However, I am still not sure whether my gaze caused these changes or not. Maybe I am too complacent. Last Sunday, 
I went for a walk at the Navy Pier by the sea and saw many people, most of them are Chinese children, the others are Westerners, fishing on the floating dock for fun. The little fish that were caught were less than an inch long. They were beheaded, and their bellies were cut open alive on the floating dock. I was so heartbroken that I could hardly bear it. While chanting Buddha, I hope every fish can be free from misery. Strangely enough, I found a large group of small fishes that seemed to follow me in the water. When I walked to the other side of the wooden pier, there were hundreds of small fishes in groups that went there too. I looked back at the floating pier, I said I hope the waves will make you waggling. Soon there was a dark rush from under the floating pier, so that the anglers could not stand firmly, and everyone dispersed. This kind of accidental coincidence makes me very surprised. I don't believe I have any abilities. Nonetheless, I'm not afraid that people will laugh at my drawing far-fetched analogies. I'm willing to talk about it for the public to study. I think this may be relevant to chanting Buddha. However, I can't control these things. I can't just do it when I intend to perform. On the one hand, I think it's a coincidence, and at the same time, I'm afraid it's demons' words to puzzle people. Maybe it's still doubtful. So, you can believe that I don't have any supernatural ability yet. You can only believe that I am extremely pious and sincere. Didn't I also see the little fish being killed? I can't save the fish with my heart and thoughts. I think this is not a matter of cultivation, but that there are problems with the cycle of causality. How can we avoid the predestined catastrophe? I think that we can only do our best. About the mind power experiments I mentioned above, I think that everyone can do it. You might as well start the experiment with minor objects, such as chant the Buddha in your heart, look at a piece of paper to make it turbulent. Or stare at the candlelight to make it rise, stare at the pages of the book, stare at the toothpicks and move them. If we keep experimenting, it will be effective over time, from shallow to deep, at least there will be coincidences. What I propose is just to explain that chanting Buddha is the best way to enter tranquility and concentration, and it is the best way to release our potential intellectual power that is imprisoned by material desires. If someone criticizes what I mentioned as the demon statements or superstition, you might as well ask them to read more Buddhist scriptures and study more new scientific knowledge. People often measure and criticize what they don't know by their ignorance, which is very unfortunate. Magical abilities are nothing more than manifestations of the release of potential, and there is nothing magic or bizarre.